The British Museum, founded in 1753, is the world's oldest and largest comprehensive museum, renowned as one of the four most famous museums globally. With over 8 million artifacts, its collection spans over 2 million years of human history. Here, you can encounter civilizations, empires, and dynasties from every corner of the globe. Due to limited space and specific reasons, only 1% of the collection is on public display. The primary sources of the British Museum's collection are widely known to be acquisitions resulting from Britain's colonial and expansionist activities in the 18th and 19th centuries. The museum's vast treasure trove has made it a target for theft throughout its history. Today, we will introduce 10 true epic treasures, each a centerpiece of the museum's collection. The Flood Tablet is a highly valuable artifact in the British Museum, and its discovery story is quite fascinating. In 1849, British archaeologist Austin Henry Laird unearthed a massive library dating back 2,500 years in the ancient Sumerian city of Nippur. This library contained over 30,000 clay tablets, and among them was the Flood Tablet. Laird was one of the most prominent Mesopotamian archaeologists of his time, and his discovery provided invaluable insights into ancient civilizations. This tablet is inscribed with cuneiform script, one of the world's earliest writing systems, invented by the ancient Sumerians. Western scholars spent nearly 400 years deciphering cuneiform, making it one of the earliest recorded writing systems. The tablet records an ancient flood story, a chapter from the world's oldest epic, the Epic of Gilgamesh. It tells of a man who, as a hero, was instructed by a deity to build a ship, gather his family, and rescue various animals to escape an impending flood, a narrative similar to the biblical story of Noah's Ark. Remarkably, the tablet predates the composition of the Bible, making it a precious testament to ancient religions and cultures. The renowned writer Zacharias Itchin, using cuneiform script interpretation, even claimed to have found references to the Anunnaki, extraterrestrial beings from the planet Nibiru, who allegedly played a role in shaping human civilization. His findings are detailed in his most famous work, The Earth Chronicles. The British Museum possesses numerous ancient Assyrian artifacts, among which the human-headed winged bull is an artifact of immense historical value. The statue of the human-headed winged bull dates back to the 8th to 7th centuries BC, a time when the Assyrian Empire was a dominant force in the ancient Near East. This sculpture serves as a precious representative of ancient Assyrian culture and art and is commonly known as Lamassu. Lamassu is a type of guardian deity characterized by a human head, a lion's body, and eagle wings. In ancient Assyrian culture, they played a role in safeguarding against evil and disasters, often placed at the entrances of palaces and city gates to protect cities. This statue not only represents the grand history of the Assyrian Empire but also provides valuable insights into the society, culture, and belief systems of the time. It is one of the significant exhibits among the British Museum's collection of ancient Assyrian artifacts and stands as a representative of the ancient Near Eastern civilization. The pair to it is in the Metropolitan Museum, New York. The Rosetta Stone is one of the most historically significant treasures in the British Museum, with an age of approximately 2,200 years. Discovered by the French army in 1799 at a fortress in Rosetta, modern Rashid, Egypt, its historical importance lies in unlocking the mystery of ancient Egyptian and ancient Greek scripts. Engraved with identical text in three languages ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs, ancient Greek, and Demotic script, the Rosetta Stone became the key to deciphering ancient scripts. This breakthrough was achieved when the young French scholar Jean-Francois Champollion successfully decoded the hieroglyphs in 1822, marking a pivotal moment in the history of deciphering ancient languages. The Rosetta Stone is precious because it opened the door to understanding ancient Egyptian writing, allowing scholars to delve deeper into the history and religious texts of this ancient civilization. Its presence enables the reading of historical and religious documents, 
providing profound insights into the fascinating world of ancient Egypt. As the centerpiece of the British Museum, it stands as a testament to the decipherment of ancient languages and the unraveling of the mysteries of the past. The Nereid Monument, also known as the Temple of the Sea Nymphs, stands as a pinnacle of artistic and historical significance within the British Museum. Dating back to approximately 380 BCE, this remarkable monument was discovered in Xanthos, southwest Turkey, which was part of ancient Lycia and the Achaemenid dynasty. The structure reflects a fusion of architectural styles, incorporating the opulent decoration of the Ionian-style temples on the Acropolis in Athens, showcasing the cultural exchange between ancient Greece and Persia. The monument, designed as a funerary memorial, portrays intricate reliefs on its base, depicting scenes inspired by the Greco-Persian Wars. At its center are three headless statues representing Nereids, the daughters of the sea god Nereus and Doris in Greek mythology. The Nereids were legendary sea nymphs known for aiding sailors caught in storms. Discovered with precision in Xanthos, the Nereid monument has survived the test of time, adding over two millennia to its storied history. Its exceptional state of preservation and the exquisite details of the reliefs contribute to its status as the most complete and finely crafted temple within the British Museum. The monument's historical significance lies not only in its artistic prowess but also in its representation of the cultural interchange between different civilizations. Its scenes from mythology and history offer a captivating glimpse into the beliefs and events of the time. As a prized possession of the British Museum, the Nereid Monument continues to be a symbol of ancient craftsmanship, historical narratives, and the enduring legacy of diverse cultures. The Sutton Hoo Helmet, housed in the British Museum, is an extraordinary archaeological treasure that offers a glimpse into the rich history of the Anglo-Saxon period. Dating back to approximately 620 to 640 AD, this masterpiece was unearthed at Sutton Hoo in Suffolk, England, during the early 20th century. The discovery took place in 1939, when archaeologist Basil Brown excavated a burial ship mound at Sutton Hoo. Within the ship burial, a stunning array of artifacts was found, including the Sutton Hoo helmet. This well-preserved helmet is an exceptional example of Anglo-Saxon craftsmanship, showcasing intricate metalwork and elaborate decorations. What makes the Sutton Hoo helmet particularly remarkable is its unique face mask adorned with eye-shaped motifs, displaying a sophisticated artistic design. The craftsmanship and attention to detail highlight the skill of the Anglo-Saxon metalworkers during this period. This helmet holds immense historical significance as it provides insights into the social and cultural aspects of the Anglo-Saxon society. The burial site is believed to belong to a person of high status, possibly a king or noble, making the artifacts within the ship a reflection of the wealth and craftsmanship of the time. Displayed prominently in the British Museum, the Sutton Hoo helmet stands as a centerpiece, attracting visitors from around the world. It serves as a testament to the artistic achievements of the Anglo-Saxons and offers a tangible connection to a bygone era. As a key highlight in the museum's collection, it symbolizes the enduring legacy of the Anglo-Saxon civilization and the importance of preserving our cultural heritage.
The Admonition Scroll is an awe-inspiring Chinese artifact housed in the British Museum, considered one of its flagship treasures. Due to lighting considerations, this masterpiece, spanning 1,500 years, is displayed no more than three times a year, with a total exhibition duration not exceeding eight weeks, aimed at preserving its delicate silk scroll. The Admonition Scroll is the earliest surviving narrative-style silk painting in Chinese history and is hailed as the foremost among China's ten most precious paintings, cherished by emperors of various dynasties. Emperor Qianlong of the Qing Dynasty affixed 37 of his collection seals to the painting, even personally illustrating an orchid, demonstrating his profound affection for this artwork. The original artist of the Admonition Scroll was Ji Yu Kaiji, a painter of the Eastern Jin Dynasty, recognized as the first Chinese painter to sign his name on artworks. Regrettably, the authentic of the Admonition Scroll has long been lost, with only two surviving copies, one at the British Museum, and another at the Beijing Museum. The version in the British Museum is considered closest to Ji Yu Kaiji's style. Legend has it that during the invasion of China by the Eight Nation Alliance, British Captain Clarence Johnson allegedly stole it from the Yuan Mingyuan. Another account suggests the captain saved a noble woman, and the painting was a gift from her. Regardless, the survival of this fragile silk painting amid the chaos of war is nothing short of miraculous. The admonition scroll imparts teachings on female virtue through painted scenes, aiming to attain honor. The artwork typically accompanies text to articulate societal expectations and teachings on female conduct. Divided into three sections for display due to its delicate nature, this surviving masterpiece represents a cultural and historical marvel. During World War II, the British government contemplated returning the admonition scroll to China as a gesture of gratitude for the collaboration between Chinese and British forces. However, China opted for a more practical gift, a submarine, in those tumultuous times. The British Museum houses an iconic artifact, the Statue of Ramesses II, also known as Ramesses the Great, from ancient Egypt. During his Egyptian expedition, Napoleon visited the Temple of Bastet at Bubastis, and it was there that he instantly fell in love with this magnificent statue of Ramesses II. He had the desire to transport it back to the Louvre, but due to its immense size, it proved to be an insurmountable challenge. A small hole on the right side of the statue's chest was a mark left by Napoleon during his visit. Later on, the British hired Italian archaeologist Belzoni and employed hydraulic systems to successfully move the statue. They then hired hundreds of Egyptian laborers to transport the statue to the banks of the Nile and subsequently loaded it onto an oil tanker for shipment to London, where it became a prized possession of the British. This red granite statue, reaching an impressive 3.25 meters, 10.7 feet, in height, vividly portrays the majesty and grandeur of Ramesses II, with intricate details in the facial features and royal adornments. Among all the pharaohs of ancient Egypt, Ramesses II of the 19th dynasty marked the zenith of the Egyptian New Kingdom. He reigned for a remarkable 67 years and was known for mythologizing his achievements, especially following his campaigns, including the famous Battle of Kadesh in Syria against the Hittite Empire. His homecoming saw a frenzy of self-promotion, with his heroic image etched into the walls of numerous temples. Aside from the three-meter-tall statue of Ramesses II housed at the British Museum, if you venture to the famous Abu Simbel Temple south of Aswan in Egypt, you will encounter colossal seated statues of Ramesses II, 
towering up to 20 meters in height. These massive sculptures, all constructed over three millennia ago, remain a testament to the astonishing achievements of the ancient Egyptian civilization. The Standard of Yore, also known as the Royal Standard of Yore or the Standard of Yore of the First Dynasty of Yore, is an artifact dating back to around 4,600 years ago, from the early dynastic period of Mesopotamia. It is composed of a hollow wooden box measuring 49.53 cm in length and 21.59 cm in width. The box is adorned with inlaid panels made of shell, red limestone, and lapis lazuli, depicting scenes of war and peace. Discovered in the ancient city of Yore, located in present-day Iraq west of Naziria, the standard of Yore is believed to have served a ceremonial or symbolic purpose, possibly as a flag though its exact use remains a mystery. When unearthed, the Yor standard was already damaged and incomplete. It underwent restoration by archaeologists to present the current appearance. The intricate inlaid panels on the standard are crafted from shells, red limestone, and lapis lazuli. The imagery on the standard is divided into two main aspects, the peace panel and the war panel. The top layer depicts a king and nobles participating in a banquet with the heads of the nobles piercing the ceiling to showcase their status. On the right side, a musician plays the lyre, and a singer is performing. In the middle register, bald-headed figures wearing skirts with fringes parade animals, fish and other goods, perhaps bringing them to the feast. The bottom register shows a series of figures dressed and coiffed in a different way from those above, carrying produce in shoulder bags or backpacks, or leading equids by ropes attached to nose rings. The top layer shows the victorious king, accompanied by soldiers, inspecting prisoners of war. The middle layer portrays well-equipped your soldiers engaged in battle. The bottom layer illustrates the soldiers returning in victory, riding chariots and crushing enemies under the wheels. While referred to as war panel and peace panel, these mosaics likely represent a continuous narrative, celebrating victory after a battle. This storytelling approach aligns with the Sumerian literary device known as bilutat or pairing of opposites, where contrasting concepts are juxtaposed to describe a holistic situation. The Sumerian rulers were believed to have a dual role as both military leaders and civic religious leaders, responsible for coordinating with the gods and maintaining the fertility of the land. The standard of your may have been created to depict these complementary aspects of Sumerian kingship. The Lewis Chessmen is an incredibly historically significant set of medieval chess pieces dating back to around the 12th century in Northern Europe. Discovered in the early 19th century on the Isle of Lewis in Scotland, these chess pieces are crafted from ivory and walrus tusk, showcasing the exceptional craftsmanship of Nordic artisans during that era. The discovery of these chess pieces can be traced back to 1831 when a shepherd found ivory figurines on a sand dune on the Isle of Lewis. Subsequently, a complete set of 78 chess pieces was unearthed. sparking widespread interest and becoming invaluable for the study of medieval art and culture. The historical importance of the Lewis Chessmen lies in being one of the most representative artworks of the Viking Age, offering insight into the chess culture of the Nordic region during that time. The pieces feature lively and interesting designs, depicting Vikings on one side and Scots on the other, illustrating the cultural diversity of the society. Since their discovery, the Lewis Chessmen have garnered immense popularity. They are currently housed in the British Museum in London, becoming one of the most beloved exhibits. Due to their uniqueness and historical value, the Lewis Chessmen have inspired extensive displays within the British Museum. 
And their popularity has led to the creation of numerous related products and souvenirs, attracting both visitors and collectors. The Egyptian mummies are the most renowned and emblematic artifacts in the British Museum, housed in its largest sub-museum, the Department of Ancient Egypt and Sudan. With over a hundred thousand pieces of ancient Egyptian artifacts, including inscriptions, statues, and more, the mummies stand out as the most mysterious and captivating. The collection of mummies in the British Museum surpasses both in quantity and quality those preserved by contemporary Egyptians, making them incomparable in value. Ancient Egyptians believed in the possibility of resurrection after death, and they considered the preservation of the body essential for the soul's revival in the afterlife. The process of mummification dates back to around 3700 to 3500 BCE when Egyptians developed the capability to perform anti-decomposition treatments on corpses. To create a mummy, internal organs were removed, and the abdominal cavity was filled with incense, cinnamon, and other spices. After 35 days, the body was taken out, wrapped in linen bandages, filled with aromatic substances, and coated with resin, completing the mummification process. While some may find mummies peculiar or unappealing, the technology and evolution behind mummification are complex. Initially, preserving the body involved simple methods like using dried, scalding sand. Over time, burial practices advanced from mud-brick tombs and wrapping bodies with grass or wicker to the sophisticated, anthropomorphic coffins seen today. These coffins provide insights into the appearance of the deceased during their lifetime, allowing observers to infer aspects such as height, weight, living conditions, and the technological and religious beliefs of ancient Egyptians through accompanying artifacts.